Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhousehomemood.com and today I'm gonna to show you how Luke and I built a window box planter for our large kitchen window. If you've been following along with our kitchen renovation story, you know that we took a really tiny window and we expanded it into a really large window so that we can overlook the barn and the garden. Just seemed like a wasted opportunity for light and a really good view. From the exterior, the window looks like it's always been there. It's actually very proportional and I like how it turned out. We trimmed it out with just some basic trim. We didn't do anything fancy. And I always thought it would look really beautiful to add a window box. This project, was so easy. We did it within a couple days, and obviously we have kids, so we worked on it a little bit here, a little bit there, but if you were able to dedicate time, you could probably get it done in an afternoon. For this project, we teamed up with Heart Tools, a line of tools exclusively available at Walmart. We used the 20 volt cordless drill to construct the window box. We used the hammer from Heart Tools to add the trim with some finishing nails. We used a miter saw, which this is a new tool to us. We have not had one, and I really wish that we would have, especially now after using it. I see how useful it would have been in building a chicken coop because there were tons of angles. This made it really easy to cut all of the trim to add to the box. We, of course, used the tape measure to measure our window and all of our cuts. That came in handy many times and several different drill bits. We used the entire drill bit collection from Heart Tools to make our project simple. We started by measuring our window. Our window is 90 and a half inches wide, so we wanted the box to match that and go the entire length of the window. So what I wrote on the list, since it's 90 and a half, is one eight foot board, that'll be for, no, two eight foot okay. boards for the front and the back, one 10 foot for the bottom, and okay. that way we can cut off the sides for the sides of it. I did a one by four to cut for that trimmer on the top, and then I wrote down trim for underneath that. Okay, and then like a, a decorative trim that goes a under the- trim. We used cedar one by eights for this project. We grabbed four of those, and then we also got some trim that would normally go around the ceiling. So crown molding type trim. We just got the 10 foot section of that. All right, so, we decided we want the thing 90 and a half inches to be the exact as the window. So the first thing you need okay. to do is cut. We'll make sure they're all 90 and a half. Make sure they're all 90 Boards. and a half. Three of them. Back, front, bottom. So before we cut the end boards, we have to decide if we want it to be assembled as such. As such. Like it. Or, or like as it. such. Taller or shorter? How much will I care that this... That seam's on there? I'd say no seam. But you know you could take this as an opportunity to put like another piece of trim down here. But we don't have any. Well, that's fine, but then it's gonna leave a lip no, I just for water need, to settle on. I just need on right on the outside. I know it's gonna like water will sit on that lip. Um, that's what I don't like about it. Okay, let's, I, let's, I'd say no seam. Let's run no seam. So it's no seam. It's essentially gonna be exactly this width that we're gonna cut it. Well, Without so the, how tall? That's what we're trying to figure yeah. out. Yeah. Six and one line less than six and a half. What do you call that? Three eighths. Six and three eighths. All right. It's actually the line right before six and a half. Okay, I guess I'll I called it. So I'll leave the line. Oh. We just used trim screws and some wood glue to construct the box. It was pretty simple. It's it's a two man job because you have to hold it the sides up while trying to screw it in. Oh, that sounds good. Luke also made sure to pre-drill all of the holes, that way the wood wouldn't split.
after the box was constructed, we cut out the trim. Now this part, we had to put our heads together on a little bit just because we've never cut trim before. The key is to stand it up and then cut it at a 45 degree angle with the miter saw on one end and then the other, and then you can match it around the box. Now we attach that with our heart tools hammer and some finished nails. I wanted to not screw in the trim because I wanted it to be a nice clean look and I knew that with the box we could easily hide the screw holes with paint and with trim, but this was gonna be front and center. After that, I wanted to add a little bit more bulk to the top of the box, so Luke ripped some of the one by eight, the remaining one, and we just attached that all the way around the box, except for the back, so the three sides of the box. We had to either get another board or just put this together here. We opted just to do that with a little bit of caulk and paint. Luke also made sure to pre-drill all of the holes, that way the wood wouldn't split. After constructing the box, we painted it. We were using 25 year old paint. We got it from my parents. They had kept it at their farm all these years. Nobody ever used it, and so we've been using it to paint the barn. So we had to give it a really good stir with the heart drill, but it worked perfectly. Okay, what do you got? Half inch or whatever's next. Do half. I think that's plenty. That way a bunch of soil doesn't fall through. About how many holes do you want to space them? Um, probably like every six inches or so, I think. And then like a few lengthwise? Yeah, like maybe like, you could, yeah. Otherwise, it'll pull back here unless you have it tilted a little bit, but. Okay. We decided to go with a smaller yeah, bit little. after. What, what'd you end up, what is this bit called? Or what is this one? Uh, oh, it's just a quarter inch. Quarter inch. Wood bit. After painting it, we added drainage holes with a drill bit and our heart drill, just to make sure that everything would drain out and there wouldn't be any root rot. Well, it's gonna look just as cute as it can. Man, that's cute. It looks right. It just goes with the trim. You know? Okay. It's cute. And you know, the other the other window has some of this kind of detailing, and this one doesn't. See, like, look at the door. Look at that window. It has that. This one's flat. So this adds that that it needed. That's not too much of an angle. If we just do it like that. So we can screw it at an angle. We thought of several different ways that we could possibly hang the box. We thought about using brackets. We thought about creating a French cleat, I think it's called. We ended up just going with lag bolts. To do this, we first found the studs. There were, I believe, four or five studs along the window that we could use. We utilized all of those because the box was really, really heavy, and we knew that it would be even heavier after we added everything inside of it. It is, uh, it is going downhill away from the house. Happy accident. But because then hopefully any moisture that does catch in the box will go away from the house. After we secured it with the lag bolts, we filled it first with a layer of rock and then some lightweight soil, and then we just planted it with herbs and flowers. I wanted a nice mix. Part of me thought it would be really fun to be able to reach out my window and grab herbs to put onto food, and then also some flowers just to fill in to make it really beautiful. I know next year the mint will come back and then I'll probably fill in with a few other things. I thought about adding some kind of decor in the winter, like maybe some cedar branches and pine and pine cones and that could be really pretty under the window. I really, really love how this project turned out. I just kept telling Luke, this looks so much better than I even expected. I kept walking over to the barn and looking at it and looking at it from every angle. The window had some pretty basic trim and the rest of the house, since this house was built in the 1860s, it's a Victorian. It has more ornate trim 
and I like that since we added that detail around the top of the box, it makes it fit more in with the door that's next to it and the window that's above it. It now all has those more fancy details that a Victorian has, not so straight lines. And it really just ties together. Whenever the box was empty when I was away from the house, it just blended right in. So you can either fill it up or we can, if ever it needs to be empty, it really fits in well there too. Thank you again to Heart Tools for partnering with us on this video. We had so much fun making these and I hope that we've encouraged you to make some window boxes wherever you live. We have a cottage in front of our property and a little garage behind us and both of them just have windows that are begging for window boxes. Now that I've seen how pretty they can look on the side of our house, I wanna make them all over the place. So make sure to check out Heart Tools. I'll leave the link in the description box below to hearttools.com where you can read up more on their tools as well as get them exclusively at Walmart. All right, well, thank you so much for watching this video. If you are brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.